matter seems nearly impossible to understand because the answers to all our questions lie hidden from view inside the tiny particles too small to see. We call some of these particles atoms and we use models to explain why atoms behave the way they do. This is one kind of model for an atom. This is another kind of model for the same atom. These models are familiar, but are far too complex to be helpful in understanding the basic concepts of atomic energy. So we'll use this, a much simpler model for an atom. We'll use the model to explain three processes that can tap energy stored inside the atom. These processes are radioactivity, fission, and fusion. Although we can't see them, wherever we turn, there are billions upon billions of atoms. Why is it that every now and then we can find an atom that gives off energy? It is the structure and stability of an atom that decides if it will release energy. To understand what we mean by structure and stability, think for a moment about this bridge. The bridge's structure is that particular arrangement of nuts, bolts, girders, and cables that makes the bridge stand firm against the force of gravity and the weight of traffic. We say that the bridge is stable because its structure never changes. The bridge is also a storehouse of energy. Think about the pressure holding nuts and bolts together, or all the tension in the thousands of cables. If high winds or an earthquake were to change the bridge's structure by snapping some cables, for example, the bridge would become unstable and release some of its stored energy. like the bridge, have a structure that is a particular arrangement of smaller parts called particles. Atoms are made up of three different kinds of particles. Protons and neutrons make up the tiny interior called the nucleus. A third kind of particle called an electron spins at an enormous speed in orbit around the nucleus. The different particles that make up an atom are attracted to one another. This attraction is what holds the atom together, making it stable, sturdy, and durable. So durable, in fact, that most of the atoms that make up the planets and moons of our solar system have remained unchanged for billions of years. The attraction between the different particles that make up an atom is especially important because it represents stored energy. Think of it as similar to the pressure holding bolts under the bridge or the tension in the bridge's cables. If an atom becomes unstable and undergoes a change in structure, some of its stored energy will be released. For example, some atoms are so large that the attraction between the particles is not strong enough to hold the atom together. Pieces of the atom may fly off in all directions. We call this process radioactivity. Using a machine called a bubble chamber, we can photograph the traces left by these wayward particles as they pass through the chamber. Another device that can detect the presence of these particles is a Geiger counter, which measures how often particles from a radioactive substance reach its sensor. Sometimes, these particles can interact with other atoms, causing them to give off energy, often in the form of heat or light. This is why many radioactive substances appear to glow in the dark. 
Many scientists believe that the core of the Earth is radioactive. They suspect that the heat released by this radioactivity melts the rock we see as lava from a volcano. Volcanoes are not radioactive, but many scientists believe that they get their power from a radioactive furnace. As impressive as a volcano may seem, radioactivity alone releases almost no energy at all compared to what some special radioactive atoms are capable of. These special radioactive atoms, like this one, are called fissionable atoms. Uranium is the most common example of a fissionable substance. The process that releases energy from fissionable atoms is called nuclear fission, commonly known as splitting the atom. The word fission means that something splits into at least two smaller things. This is what happens to an atom during nuclear fission. A fissionable atom is radioactive and unstable to begin with. If a stray neutron comes near, it may be drawn into the nucleus of the fissionable atom. This makes the atom more unstable, causing it to pull apart and create two new atoms. And to set free at least two neutrons. These free neutrons may then cause other atoms to fission, releasing more neutrons. This process, called a nuclear chain reaction, has a lot in common with this arrangement of dominoes. If we want to knock down all the dominoes, we need strike only one. The process continues without any help from us until all the dominoes have fallen. In a nuclear chain reaction, atoms keep on splitting, releasing energy and more neutrons until there are no fissionable atoms left. We never need to worry that a flower or anything else in nature will start a nuclear chain reaction because in nature we can never find the right conditions and enough fissionable atoms to keep the process going. But we can create these conditions artificially. Once a nuclear chain reaction is set in motion, if left uncontrolled, it will result in a fission bomb. Commonly known as an atomic bomb. Luckily, we do know how to control a nuclear chain reaction. For example, a nuclear power plant uses fission to produce energy, but it can never become a bomb. In part, because the fission process is controlled by a special material that soaks up some of the neutrons set free by the reaction. We can think of this material as a neutron sponge. In a nuclear power plant, the fission process starts off normally. But after the reaction gets going, the neutron sponge starts soaking up about half the neutrons set free by the reaction. The process continues, but a chain reaction is prevented. This allows technicians to control how much energy is released. Unfortunately, the byproducts of nuclear fission are highly radioactive and may remain dangerous for thousands of years. There is hope that we may yet find a totally safe source of energy from atoms. Many people believe that nuclear fusion is that source of energy. Nuclear fusion provides the fire for our sun and the other stars in the universe. Like radioactivity and fission, nuclear fusion releases energy because it changes the structure of atoms. The word fusion means joined together. Two small atoms joined together 
to make one slightly larger atom. Nuclear fusion starts with two atoms of hydrogen. These two atoms fuse and create a single atom of helium. It sounds simple, but for fusion to occur, the hydrogen atoms must first be heated to a temperature near 100 million degrees Celsius. At this enormous temperature, the hydrogen atoms become unstable and the electrons are no longer held in orbit. What remains are two hydrogen nuclei. These nuclei may fuse together, causing the release of a tremendous amount of energy. This energy may cause other hydrogen atoms to fuse and can result in a hundred million degree fireball against which there is little, if any, protection. A fusion reaction out of control results in a thermonuclear bomb, commonly known as a hydrogen bomb. We know that the heat produced during nuclear fusion could be used to drive generators to produce electricity, but we do not yet have the knowledge or technology to control fusion. However, efforts are underway at this laboratory in California and elsewhere around the world. So perhaps sometime early in the next century, we will be able to tame fusion and put it to work providing energy for a very busy Earth. But research today is not limited to nuclear fusion. In fact, great laboratories all over the world are devoted to developing experimental equipment that may help us answer some of the many questions we have about radioactivity, fission, and fusion. Unfortunately, it will certainly take years, if not hundreds of years, of such research and experimentation before we can safely say that the energy inside the atom is under control. Thank you.